Phil Tufnell, Mel C and Carol Vorderman spend Friday night with Jonathan Ross here on BBC One at 10.35. Welcome to How I Got News For You. I'm John Sargent, and on behalf of the BBC, I'd like to apologise for the repeated use of the F-word in last week's programme. This week, we promise we'll try not to mention France at all. <laughs> in the news this week, touching home video footage is unearthed of Mr and Mrs Beadle, moments before the birth of Jeremy. In Kettering, having wallpapered his turkey, Britain's most absent-minded man moves on to his next chore. <laughs> and outside a restaurant in Cardiff, there's a rough reception for the mint sauce delivery man. John Ian's team is a comedian who unusually has a degree in maths and physics, which, let's face it, isn't exactly rocket science. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Dara O'Brien. <laughs> On Paul's team is a Liberal Democrat MP who goes out with a weather presenter, and even she can forecast he'll never be in government. Please welcome <laughs> Lembido <laughs> And we start with round one. Paul and Lembet. OK, this is obviously a classroom. That's uh, Charles, Charles Clark. Clark. Yeah, Clark is his known. Uh, half girl, half sack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's several stories all, all rolled into one there, John. Charles Clark went to school, didn't he? And there were some kids that sort of started doing the sort of yep. bunny fingers behind his head and he didn't know about that. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing his ears? <laughs> But well, what about the, the, the SATs tests, though? These were the tests which were reformed? They weren't reformed. They were just dropped, weren't they? they, found <laughs> they all the kids were stupid, so they just dropped the test. Like, they said, ah, on reflection, let's not do anything with these. It's become an aspiration now instead of a target. <laughs> <you see. laughs> well, I never understood this, the three R's, reading, writing and arithmetic. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was an A. Well, writing begins with a W. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> There was a problem with 11-year-olds. They came out of school illiterate and innumerate. Mm. So the government said, we'll set a target, 85% of kids have got to pass these tests. And then they realised they were going to fail. So <laughs> they dropped the tests. Yeah, but the kids are innumerate. They don't count, do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be using it tomorrow. <laughs> So that was that story. You know, the, 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 the sack race, race thing is... Um, competition, isn't it? Yeah. That, uh, some schools stopping the competitions from taking place because losing was a bad thing, as I can tell you. <laughs> What's wrong with the sports day? Oh, I'm all for sports day. I mean, uh, I thought um, we'd lost all this in the 70s, the idea that people couldn't lose. I mean, as Lembit said, it's very good training for later on in life. <laughs> Everyone a winner. Uh, I don't know well, not necessarily in, in your case. Uh, <laughs> No, sorry, childish. So nice. One of these young people due to take a test was sent home. Can I throw out the name Kenny Jameson? Does that mean anything to Kenny you? Kenny Jameson? Oh, yeah, he was I've never heard of him. <laughs> oh, oh yes. because of his hair. Yeah, He's been combing his he was... hair with a saw. <laughs> <laughs> he claimed that Beckham actually copied him. Right, so are we moving on to why did David Beckham do this? Oh, he wants to get thrown out of school, clearly. Uh, <laughs> no, I think the clue the is that he's going to see someone important. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, yeah, right now then. This is one of the great momentous moments in history, isn't it? Uh, it's an amazing honour for, for everyone involved in, uh, you know, the FA and the England team. So we've brought a shirt down, um, which... Oh, very good. As you know, <laughs> as I know all about... Very good. Very good. Well, it's a very moving moment. Now, it what is. Did... 
What did Nelson Mandela say about the haircut? He said he couldn't comment on it because he'd seen, he was too old, he'd seen too many young people doing too many silly things with their hair in the past. <laughs> Nearly right, Ian. <laughs> I am too old to express an opinion on the latest developments by young people. I know In other how words, he feels. I thought he looked a twit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the turmoil in the education system. Teachers are preparing themselves for a spate of Beckham look-alike haircuts. David Beckham has admitted that after his hair was done, his head hurt for a while, presumably from working out 10% for the barber's tip. <laughs> Ian and Dara, this is for you. Oh, this is all fat cat pay, this stuff, isn't it? Yeah, there's a cat eating cream. That's a lot of pills. Yeah, which we're both desperately trying to act that we know it's Viagra. <laughs> we're trying not to admit that we know it's Viagra. That's not Viagra, is it? No, that's Patricia Hewitt. Much the same effect, I've heard. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's been a shareholder revolt. Shareholder revolt. At a big about... drug company. Yes. yes, and that big drug company happens to be GlaxoSmithKline. Yep. And its chief executive, Jean-Pierre Garnier. Or yes. JP, as he's known. He likes to be known as JP, uh, rather than that bastard who gets 22 million <laughs> if he gets fired. Uh, <laughs> it's the first time that the, the culture of rewarding people for failure has been challenged in this country. Because it's been a British tradition for a long time. You run a big company, it goes down the toilet, the shareholding price goes, we all lose our pensions, you get a big payoff. Seems fair. And what's it called? What's the name for this? Capitalism. New... Yes. <laughs> A golden, golden parachute. A golden, <laughs> golden parachute, just what we all need. It's not the ideal material for a parachute to be made out of, is it? Really? As you're hurtling towards the earth, you think this, that must be worth about 400 quid. I like Garnier, though. He said afterwards, well, for heaven's sake, I'm not Mother Teresa. <laughs> and I thought, no, she... we never thought you were. Right. <laughs> she made some poly. She made 35 million, she got. <laughs> um, <laughs> She really got them. She yeah. Got them. <laughs> I mean, it's a big incentive, though, isn't it? If you get £22 million for getting the sack, I mean, how long would you stay in your job for? <laughs> you would just go up to your boss and say, I slept with your wife last night. <laughs> I've got all the suitcases with me. I mean, you wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be in the job five minutes, would you, John? No, I... <laughs> It's the angry shareholders' vote against a massive payout for the chief executive of Glaxo. According to The Guardian, Jean-Pierre Garnier was in charge when Glaxo Welcome merged with SmithKline Beecham. His company is now known as Glaxo SmithKline, so just like him, no longer welcome. <laughs> uh, this week's AGM was a stormy affair. According to The Guardian, one shareholder after another stood up to criticise Mr Garnier's package. <laughs> it's a bit personal, isn't it? <laughs> Time now for the tabloid headline round. Ian and Dara, here's your cryptic headline clue. Prescott tells Mandelson to shut up. <laughs> so this is about the Euro, I presume. Come on, yes, you're warm, you're doing well. Oh, you're a little tease, aren't yes. you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Ian, big tease? <laughs> <laughs> I feel I've stumbled across another side of you, John. <laughs> I believe this is a political story. Mandelson went to a lunch with a group of journalists and off the record uh, <laughs> with a group of uh, female journalists. journalists. Yeah. Peter Mandelson doesn't know much about the media. <laughs> no, no. Um, he just happened to say, Brown's a bit of a loony between us. Um, train spotter, Anorak, bit mad, um, and Blair's lost the plot. And amazingly, all the journalists said, thank you, Mr Mandelson, and write it down. And the story appeared the next day. And what did Peter Mandelson say to one of the journalists, the main journalist who leaked the story? Am I talking too quickly for you? <laughs> <laughs> he said to her, you're finished. Why, because she'd finished writing or...? Be no, because he <laughs> the, was... The pudding was over. Yeah. <laughs> he meant, you're finished, your career is over. Yes, well, he should know, shouldn't he? Do you think no. he'll be back again? No. Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> Can't lie to There'll you. have to be a steak through the heart next time, <laughs> <laughs> just to be absolutely certain. What else was Peter Mandelson worried about in this rather intimate conversation, which we've now heard all the details of? He said the avocado salad was a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is very personal. I really... feel like I'm at a seance of some description. Yeah. You're there going, <laughs> something, there's something. <laughs> is there a Mary in the room? Uh... <laughs> He turned up to this lunch and uh, he said at some point I've probably got prostate problems. But didn't he also say, this is quite alarming, he didn't know where his prostate was. <laughs> didn't he say it was in Huddersfield? <laughs> <laughs> in a jar? Has that satisfied your curiosity? <laughs> yeah. What about another Euro row, though? 
I don't want to have to start ranting again. Um, well, I got something wrong last week. I said that Romano Prodi was in charge of the European Commission when the whole Commission had to resign because of a corruption scandal, and he wasn't. It was Jacques Santer. I got the wrong European. Very uh, decent of you to put that right. You know, I, I feel obliged. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about ham, Ian. Parma ham. Parma oh, right, yes. I missed that then. Parma ham. Asda were trying to sell Parma ham because yes. it's ham that doesn't come from Parma, and he said we slice it here and it's Parma ham, and then we call it Parma ham. But Parma people from Parma said no, because we, we, the ham is sliced here, so it's Parma ham. If it's not sliced here, it's just ham. How do you know this stuff? Well, it was in one of the papers, and I, I thought I might read up as I knew I was coming on this programme. <laughs> It's Fair a little, point. little tactic point. of mine. I shouldn't have revealed it, really, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great deal of success over the years. Yes, this is the continuing row over Europe and Peter Mandelson's contribution this week. Despite the alleged row, Gordon Brown has said he is very happy for Britain to join the Euro just as soon as the five tests for hell freezing over are met. <laughs> According to the Mirror, on the day that Mandelson spoke out, Gordon Brown gave a speech on the Euro to business leaders at the CBI annual dinner. Sorry if I look happy, but there was a time when I'd have had to be there. <laughs> Paul and Lembit, your spinning headline. Beauty is in the eye of the beelder. This is the Barbara Bazaar story, this woman, um, Nicole, somebody, who, uh, she's taken out an insurance policy, or somebody's agreed to, to accept money from her. Let's have a look at her. She's Nicole Jones, and her husband is a builder. Yeah. If a panel of ten independent builders say she is ugly, um, then sh they will pay up this money. Well, I like the statement from the insurance policy. Mm -hmm. They said, it's a genuine policy, we would be prepared to pay out on it. Well, you can't <laughs> have... Both those statements can't be true, can <laughs> <laughs> The company also offers, I should say, mm. a policy to cover alien abductions. Yeah. So, Lembit, I think you would like that, wouldn't you? You're interested in aliens abducting people? Yes, but... Uh, Do you believe in meteorites? They're not aliens abducting Yeah, I believe in meteorites. Why, everyone really. believes in meteorites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not to say <laughs> such a Do you believe in the moon? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're not a fabled creature drawn across <laughs> the sky. Comets, they also exist, right? Yeah. <laughs> but elves, no. <laughs> Is 750 times more likely to die in an asteroid impact than to win the National Lottery this uh, year? Yes, uh, thank you, Lambert. I think you're, 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 you're absolutely right. No, it's very important, right. Um, <laughs> yes. The chances of winning the yes. National Lottery and then being hit by an asteroid. Yes, no. Small. Small. Thank, thank you. As well, thank you very much, Lewis. Thank you very much. Hold on. Hold on. That is it now. That is quite enough. It's the heat, it's the, the heat, heat John. Gets you. It's the heat that gets you from the asteroid. Yeah. Is it? The lava. There is a cream you can get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as it says. What do you mean, yes? Yes. <laughs> Nobody said anything in the last five minutes, which the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. It is He's yes. hoping it's an edit point. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, it's yes. the story of the builder's wife who insured her for £100,000. Which made it to page 24 of anyway, the Sun, yeah. unlike her husband, who He's never gets past yeah. page 3. <laughs> According to the Sun, Mrs Jones's attractiveness will be judged by a panel consisting of ten randomly chosen builders, or as the Sun usually refers to them, asylum seekers. <laughs> Ian and Dara, US in POW Barney, what's that all about? Uh, they have Iraqi people who they're interrogating at the moment, and in order to break them, uh, they play the Barney song at them repeatedly for 45 minutes. Right? I, I have no children myself. I am told that this is a t like an appalling thing anyway. I love you, you love me. That's, I'm quoting, by the way. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know if they actually get Barney to come into the cell. Right, well, and that's <laughs> around, that's a... No, I think, I think that's against the Geneva Convention. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let us have a go at some of this music and just see whether we feel tortured. Okay, Here we go. Ahead. I've got children. Stop it! And a knick-knack paddy <laughs> wag. Give the dog a bone. Did somebody, get, did somebody write that tune? Let's go on now, because there's more music. OK. Here we go. Is that Barney's... Uh, He's like changed direction, okay. hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Is right. that a difficult second album for me? <laughs> <laughs> You're good on this sort of music, Ian. What do you think? 
that was Barney's um, heavy metal phase. Ah, oh, heavy actually, metal, that's clever. It's actually his grunge phase. That was Nirvana, wasn't the second one? Yes. No, it's Metallica, a classic of metal. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was Enter Sandman. Who else has been investigated for the way that he either has or hasn't treated the Iraqis? Oh, Colonel Tent. Somebody. Tim Collins is accused uh, of, among other things, mystery firing into the ground, which yeah, is envir stopped. environmentalism gone mad if you can't fire a gun into the ground. <laughs> the, uh, and uh, and of, of pistol whipping uh, Iraqi prisoners. And I have no idea what pistol whipping is. Like, whatever. I presume it's just making the noise and going, get in there. <laughs> 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 This is the revelation that US interrogators are trying to break the will of Iraqi prisoners of war by forcing them to listen to a mixture of children's songs and heavy metal. <laughs> Elsewhere in Iraq, Colonel Tim Collins has been accused of war crimes by an American soldier. Officers on active service can sometimes overreact, according to a fellow officer, Colonel Bob Stewart. In Northern Ireland, I can personally remember slapping a woman because she was going absolutely ballistic and was uncontrollable. But that's Mo Molan for you. <laughs> Paul and Lembert, your question. I'm a convict, get me out of here. Ah, uh, yes, the, the clue's in the backward letters, I think. Uh, there's a new show on Russian television. They want to find the most musical prisoner in, Russian, in a Russian prison. And so mm. prisoners can, can come forward and they can <laughs> sing a song. And if they decide, you know, it's decided at the end of this talent contest they are the most musical prisoner in Russia, they are released. <laughs> That's, that's what's happening. That's it. It sounds like a made-up story, but I'm sure it is. Uh, this is how BBC News reported this, but listen carefully, very carefully, to the commentary. It's brilliant. But it's a struggle hitting the big time when you're inside doing time. <laughs> As anyone here will tell you, it's no business like show business. Ruslan's serving five years for manslaughter, so the only venue he can play at the moment is the prison club. It's a captive audience. Ruslan says he's learnt his lesson. He's taken the rap. Now he wants the rap to take him out of jail. National and international news from the BBC. <laughs> Do you think that standards in television are falling, Lambert? What about uh, your girlfriend? No, Sean did very... She loved being out in the jungle from, when, from the moment she arrived to the moment she left, but she was bored to tears. Nothing to do. She didn't do anything for a long time, did she? That was the problem. Do you, you know what the problem was with Sean Lloyd? Yeah, she couldn't change her shoes for seven days. You didn't what change is that? shoes? That's what they called it when you didn't have a dump in the jungle. <laughs> it's true. Why, why would she, why would she want to go to the toilet in her shoes? Shoe. <laughs> That's what they called it, for the, for the sensibilities of the viewing public. But when yeah. she finally did... Yeah. Oh, Whoa. God, are we actually putting this out? <laughs> <laughs> it's what, what bad exactly, enough that exactly ITV I... puts this rubbish on. <laughs> have we got to talk about it? Wait a moment. When she finally got into They're the mood... Oh, called... John! <laughs> They're doing a new show called Celebrity Court, where you dig up somebody after five years and try and guess who they were. <laughs> <laughs> Darius is furiously <laughs> digging his way into the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's yes. the relentless. <laughs> if, ever, if ever the word yes was mis misused, that was then. Yes. Yes. Say it's no. It's the relentless no. march of pop culture. <laughs> Russian prison officials are organising a singing competition for Pop Prisoner of the Year, with the winner earning their freedom. It's been described as pop idols in prison. Now, that's an idea. <laughs> the new show has been described as Eurovision with handcuffs. Well, that's the only way you get me to watch it. <laughs> at the end of all that, the scores have moved on to Ian and Dara, six, Paul and Lembit, six also. <laughs> Round three is all about picking the odd one out. Paul and Lembit, your four are George Galloway, Abu Hamza, Steve Bing and Glenn Miller. Uh, is Steve Bing the only one who hasn't left the country or hasn't, isn't being thrown out of the country? Or? No, no, you're not really on to it. So here's a clue. Glenn Miller is the odd one out because of one of his hits. Moonlight Serenade. No. Death to the West. <laughs> no. Nope. In the mood. In the mood for driving the Israelis into the sea. Yeah. No. I'll tell you what, we'll actually play you a bit of it. Go on. Oh, yeah. Pennsylvania 4-5. 
Pennsylvania 6, 6 5, 000. 000, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. telephone <laughs> numbers, it's about telephone numbers. Telephone numbers, numbers. yeah, so we're getting on to it. Abu Hamza finds it relatively difficult to use a mobile phone. <laughs> 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 Do with the sun and the mirror? Does that help? The sun they, and the mirror. They, um, they tape the conversation. Oh, uh, they've they've bugged them. And the sun and the mirror bugged they, all they of those no, people. No, no, no. I'll have to tell you, you're Go not ahead. doing very well. They've all had their telephone numbers published in newspapers, except Glenn Miller, who made a phone number famous through song. Ah. Oh. Now, what about Mustafa Hamza? Let's say a bit about him. Do you know what his uh, real name is? You Sorry. Do you know about Abu Hamza? Do you know what his real name is? Mustafa. <laughs> It was like I heard the answer before you asked the question. <laughs> Very spooky. Is he right? Abu Hamza's real name is... Kevin. Must have a camel. <laughs> Must have a camel. It's not very funny, but it's absolutely true. <laughs> and what was the, the wonderful mistake the Sun made when they printed Galloway's phone number? Well, they got it wrong and some poor sod got thousands of phone calls. Helen Jones, <laughs> fellow MP. Yeah. She spent the next 48 hours fielding calls for Galloway. <laughs> How has the Labour hierarchy reacted to these allegations against Galloway? Well, they've thrown him out, haven't they? Yeah, it's, uh, Mr Galloway has been suspended, they said, mm. during an internal investigation. Rather more detail than we needed, I'd have thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's rich coming from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit in the boots jungle, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Abu Hamza claims he lost his hand and one eye in a landmine accident. Asked recently if he had at the time been making an explosive device, he replied, talk to the hook, because the patch ain't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Dara, your favourites are John Lennon, Ringo Starr, James Dyson and William Henry Davis. No intention of telling us who William Henry Davis is, I suppose, at the stage. Yeah? Is he Pipe Man of the Year, yes. 1931? <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy who wrote that, uh, the poem, What is Life is Full of Care? We know ha have no time to stand and stare. Uh, but I'm incredibly impressed. I'll try. A literate and cultured MP. Right. <laughs> All right. I'll give it a bit I'm more. Foreign. I'll do it with a bit more emotion. Go on, then. Go on, then. What is this life is full <laughs> of care? <laughs> <laughs> we have no time to stand and stare. How about a bit less yeah. emotion? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so that's... This is about gardens. Oh, it is about yes, gardens. Yes, well, that's... Gardens, gardens is good. Gardens, gardens is good. Because Ringo was at the Chelsea Flower Show this week, uh, where they had built a garden and he was pictured standing in the middle, being slightly disappointed in a kind of a, well, where are all the naked hippie chicks? Uh, <laughs> Hold on a moment, let's, let's have a look at that. How lovely is that? Very Ringo. Dyson, you'd imagine, is very rich, so probably has a garden. Mm. Uh, very clean garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Ringo Starr's the odd one out, because he's forgotten what he's done with his cigar. He thinks he's still got it in his hand. <laughs> So which one's the odd one out? Dyson. Yeah, now, Dyson? Lem yeah, okay. Lembit has stumbled on the right answer for stumbled. the wrong reason. <laughs> uh, they've all inspired gardens except Dyson, who didn't inspire a garden but did make a water feature. Oh, yes, it's the water that runs Chelsea. uphill. Oh, uphill, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Extraordinary. Right. Do you know what the, the garden is called that he's got his fountain in? It's water called, gone balmy. No, it's called the wrong garden. They wanted to have... No green in it. I wanted, he said, to investigate the idea of wrongness as a design principle. And he could also look into smugness and uselessness. <laughs> <laughs> the William Henry Davis poem, Leisure, inspired the inmates of Layhill Open Prison to design a garden for this year's Chelsea Flower Show. According to a flower show spokesman, it's a perfect natural scene with a boathouse, pond and wildflowers that a prisoner might imagine while locked in a cell. <laughs> Maybe, but my money's still on a naked woman. <laughs> <laughs> Missing Words is the final round featuring this week's guest publication, UFO Magazine. I imagine, Limbit, you're a regular reader? Funnily enough. <laughs> Funnily enough what? Yes. Yes? <laughs> so here we go. Henry VIII is what? Dead. <laughs> Topical news quiz. A sequel too fast is Henry VII. <laughs> Henry VIII is cleared of theft. According oh, to the really? Times, new evidence suggests the Lindisfarne Gospels were removed during the reign of Elizabeth I. Police are now looking for a 400-year-old ginger-haired <laughs> woman. <laughs> and Robinson has gone into hiding. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Next, what puts fear of God into Tokyo criminal? Tall people. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexic pets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was exceptionally proud of that. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Sumo Patrol puts okay. fear of God into Tokyo criminals. It, surely you'd hear them coming, wouldn't you? <laughs> Next, Tories will be what? Is this party of the poor? Well done. <laughs> Labour's now the party of the rich, so there's a gap in the market. So the Tories have gone for it. With the slogan, remember us, we got you here. Uh, <laughs> Next, Giscard d'Estaing is now so grand, he thinks he's what? A piano. <laughs> the answer yeah. is Louis XIV. Yeah. Oh, yes, he does, too. Let us say moi. I don't want to go into another rant, but really. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, the state is me. Ah. That's basically his plan for the new European uh, constitution. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too bothered, really. No, no. <laughs> I'm the same. Wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> you excited a lot of people last week, Ian, with that. What did you say, Ian? You were too busy watching I'm yes. a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Saying to your girlfriend, what's wrong with your oh. shoes? <laughs> <laughs> it's really catching your imagination. I'd feel a wash love if I were you. <laughs> and finally, aliens kept what captive in what? Uh, sardines, tin. <laughs> Widdicombe, leotard. <laughs> Look. Dinosaurs in cave of many lights. <laughs> Giant bee, Hammersmith. <laughs> the answer is quite simple. Kept contactee captive in lunar prison. The story <laughs> appears above a drawing of two aliens spotted near Leicester by Ron Stone and a friend. <laughs> The magazine quipped, no wonder they needed a drink afterwards to steady their nerves. Can we look at that picture yeah. of two aliens again? Could that come up again? What's wrong with the shoes on the right-hand side, <laughs> you see? <laughs> Do you like them, Lambert? I mean, are they your sort of people? I've met them, actually. Are they liberal? <laughs> they look like Liberal Democrats. <laughs> that brings us to the end of tonight's contest, okay. and the final scores are as follows. Ian and Dara have nine, Paul and Lambert, seven. Oh. Before we go, there's just time for a quick caption competition. Rationing, bad news for a mascot. Uh, <laughs> is it the ham busters? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Dara O'Brien, Paul Merton and Lambert Opic. And I leave you with news that at Tory Central Office, Ian Duncan Smith's press conference is delayed by technical difficulties. <laughs> In Beijing, Chinese astrologers admit they've never known a year quite like it. <laughs> and one month after the war in Iraq, questions are asked about the level of security at the Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> Good night. Pub quiz for Inspector Fowler and his team on the Thin Blue Line on BBC Two in a few moments. Here on BBC One, it's Friday night with Jonathan Ross in 35 minutes. News of tonight's guests in just a moment.